Hello my followers, Hadian Corvus aka the self-proclaimed alien overlord here. I uh, thought I would bring you an update video because June 12th was the one year anniversary of my ulcerative colitis surgery that uh, got me the nice little bag here. Uh, they removed my colon. If you remember my last video, things happen, and uh, had a lot of complications and stuff. Well, um, since my last video, things had not gotten any better whatsoever. Um, in uh, um, March, I ended up going to the hospital one day every week in March and then the first week in June I ended up going four times in one week uh, due to lots of pain and dehydration and uh, every time you know the I uh, would just look over me give me shots of pain meds and then kick me out set me on my way um, uh, during that time, they had suggested that we uh, go see uh, a GI. So, during Mar uh, in March, we ended up going back to my original GI, uh, just you know, to see him and let him know what was going on and see if he had any advice. And well, his advice was it. it yeah. It had been so long that I should be ready for my final surgery by now, but he was kind of at a loss because it was kind of uh, beyond his uh, scope um, of things. So uh, he had suggested to us that we get a second opinion and look for another GI just as a second opinion because... I don't want to drop my GI. He's a great guy. He's been helping me for the last, you know, eight years and stuff. But it was just he had reached his point of expertise, so to speak, and wasn't sure where to go from there. So we did just that, and we got set up with another GI, and this time we took a GI out of the hospital where all the operations was from, and it was going to be like a month and a half wait, so we're, we waited for that. Well, in April, I went to the hospital four times in one week, and in April, um, my uh, visit with the new GI was supposed to happen. So finally, on my last ER visit, on my fourth ER visit in a week, we actually went up to the hospital where everything was, and they finally looked over all my records of me keep going to the ER, keep going to the ER, and finally someone said, okay, let's just admit them and uh, look them over then, and they ended up admitting me for, I was in the hospital for like 10 days, so. Um, during that time, luckily, uh, the surgeon who had done the original surgery and everything was like on the ball, he was awesome, he got me hooked up with pain management, uh, contacted the GI team, had someone from that team come and talk to us, kind of pre-interview us and stuff. And uh, same with the pain management, had the pain management come in and and it was kind of a, a pre-interview uh, so that, you know, um, I didn't have to wait that like two months just to go see him or whatever because getting in to see a new doctor or whatever is always a pain in the butt if you've gone through that. Uh, now it's always like a, a long wait so uh, the, the surgeon was on the ball but um, during that time they did a bunch of tests upped, uh, up my dosages and a bunch of meds because I would just dehydrate so fast and stuff and um, for the most part all that seems to be working so um, everything was set when I got out of the hospital that I had my GI appointment coming up and like another week from when I got discharged and then I, uh, I had uh, 
my first appointment with my pain management. Well, I went to my pain management and everything was great and they got me on a regimen of pain meds which has been working great for my normal pain so that's that's good. Uh, my output is still really watery and stuff and I do get dehydrated but I haven't really been back to the ER since but uh, some other stuff has happened since then and I'll explain here in a second. So um, at the end of the visit with the uh, pain management uh, and everybody knew that I had all these appointments coming up. And in fact, the pain management doctor is like, yep, and yeah, you have that uh, appointment with the GI here in a couple of days. So, you know, hopefully everything goes well with that. Well, when they went to print out my schedule, uh, my appointment wasn't on there. And it's weird because everybody knew that I had this appointment, but yet the schedule uh said I didn't and uh, we contacted the office and it it looked like somebody had deleted my appointment so we called them to get to find out what happened and to get an appointment scheduled and they wanted us to wait another month and a half and we're like no we had this scheduled somebody deleted it we want it back well little did we know the person that we talked to was the person that deleted it so f- finally they after going over their head and you know we still don't know this is the lady that deleted it All right, we went over their head and talked to the surgeon's uh, operator and she talked to her boss and they got us all scheduled uh, and actually I got in two days before my original appointment which was great so we finally talked to this new GI and uh, his nurse um, just happened to be the lady that deleted everything and we didn't know that well she must have been angry at us for getting her in trouble so we saw the GI and he decided he wants to run um, a scope uh, down the throat just to check things out uh, see how things are going and so when he left after doing his little interview and checking me over and stuff, and uh, he left and the nurse came back in to schedule the uh, procedure for the scope. Uh, she sat there, typed at her computer, told us what dates were available. We told her what dates we'd be available. She said, okay, we got everything scheduled. She said, all right, you're all set. They'll send the paperwork in the mail. And uh, a couple days uh, in ahead, the anesthesia would team would call us to go over my meds. Now it's nothing new. We already you know knew how this went because uh, it's the same with the surgeon. You know the surgeon does the same thing. The paperwork comes in the mail and all that. So uh, we were used to it. We didn't think anything was wrong, so we left. A couple days before the. Um, operation was to take place to got word because we hadn't received the paperwork and no one had called so i looked online on the my chart thing that they have set up through the hospital to find out that uh, nothing is scheduled so this lady not only deleted my original appointment but she never scheduled me for my scopes which messed everything up because uh, my anticoagulation clinic um we had to bridge my medication and I had to start taking shots just for the operation and everything and I was set for so many days um, you know before and after and this screwed everything up so uh, we luckily when we called to complain we didn't talk to this lady we talked to somebody else and she scheduled us for like a week later so but it Man, it screwed everything up with my anti my blood clot appointments and my anti you know I had to take shots more shots and stuff for a longer period of time and stuff so kind of messed everything up and we weren't happy now, unfortunately we haven't had time to complain about any of this but that's besides the point so because more bad stuff has happened since then and that's the least of our problems. So we the day so everything went great. 
we got the paperwork in the mail, the uh, anesthesia team called us, went through my meds, and we were all set up for, it was um, May 7th was this new appointment for the scope. But the day before, the doctor called and said he added, wanted to add two more scopes. And the first scope he added was uh, through the rear end to see how the J-pouch was forming because my original surgery was um, the removal of the colon to form a J-pouch, which is an artificial colon, which is uh, kind of like a, nor a normal procedure for most ulcerative colitis patients when they've gone through all the meds and nothing has worked. Um, supposed to be a couple operation procedure three months tops um, after the J pouch has formed and everything and um, everything gets hooked back up and so you have a functioning artificial colon to you know and everything um, and no more ulcerative colitis but for me my body has been through so much and if you remember my last video you know um, with everything that had been going on, um, it just hasn't healed, so that's why, that's why I'm sitting here a year later, and I still am nowhere near ready for any other operation, but I'll get to that in a minute, so, the first scope was through the rear to see how the J pouch was forming, and then the third scope he added was, um, through the stoma, which is the little thing that sticks out of my body where the bag attaches, where the d discharge, the, the um, poop, so to speak, comes out, right, and empties into the bag. I never heard of that. That seemed kind of weird. Never heard of anybody having a scope through there, but okay, well, whatever. So, get there on the 7th. Uh, they're running way behind, so we ended up sitting there for like like three hours in the prep room finally they're ready for us and they take me back and put me under anesthesia <coughs> excuse me I gotta take a little bit of water here oh, Gatorade you know gotta keep hydrated so I pass out they, <coughs> they do their scopes and um I come out, um, I finally wake up uh, a couple hours later and I am in dying pain, like just like pain you wouldn't believe and it's not from my normal abdomen stuff, it's from my stoma, I don't know what's going on. They ended up giving me like nearly 10 milligrams of Dilaudid and Dilaudid is pretty powerful stuff through the IV and it pretty much did nothing for me so they ended up keeping me in the hospital overnight um, but the weird thing is they didn't run any tests on me or anything like that and so I'm still in a lot of pain the next day and they send me home to just recover on the couch I guess is what they said you know that there wasn't anything they could do more that I couldn't do at home so I went home still in a lot of pain um, two weeks later it's morning time I wake up and I'm just still in tons of pain just in my stoma area <coughs> and um, well before that while I'm in the hospital uh, the guy who did the scope come to check up on me, and that's kind of weird. I never like, seen a scope doctor check up on a patient before, and that was weird. But the new GI also came in, and his words were me. His words to me were, medically, there's nothing else he could do. Um, there wasn't any medications he could put me on to help me, because... I'm not healing right, <clears throat> and um, I'm having a lot of discharge, mucus discharge through the rectum, which keeps me running to the bathroom 
a lot and having accidents at night and it it sucks. It's like I have ulcerative colitis still and still have my colon. So <clears throat> um with all of that it uh he says he doesn't know what to do at that point. He's at his uh, end. He doesn't think he can move any further than uh, than anything. That everything else is going to have to be surgical. Meaning that he was talking possibly them having to go in and take out everything from where my colon used to be to my stoma and me having to be on a bag for the rest of my life and uh, t to me that's a pretty hard blow to my system because you know I wanted to be all better and not be on a bag for the rest of my life or anything but I, I guess things just aren't working out the way they should for me and it sucks but anyway two weeks after I get discharged I wake up one morning, I empty my bag as normal, but the minute I stand up, just a whole bunch of blood erupts from my stoma into my bag. <clears throat> you got Excuse me, I'm getting a little choked up, so... <laughs> just bear with me. Because this is very hard to talk about, and, you know, it's just the way that everything I've had to go through and the way I'm living and it's it's tough for me um, so I rushed to the ER and they did some tests on me finally and they come to find out that when the doc the when the one doctor did the scope through the stoma he hit something and it filled with liquid blood and pus and it became really infected so they had to do emergency surgery and I was in the hospital for a week after the emergency surgery um, because of yet again another doctor screw up and you know they said if they wouldn't have caught it I probably would have died from the infection so yay me you know so now I have this huge surgical wound. It's uh, right underneath. You got the bag here. And then right underneath the bag, right here, that's where they cut it, right right, right here. So, I mean, it's really close to the bag and everything. And so uh, they let me go home after a week. And now I have a nurse that comes to my house three days a week to, to change the bandages and stuff. And... Well, to end this video real quick, to sum everything up is, I really am frustrated and I, I don't, we don't have any help. We're, our money is as tight as can be, we can barely afford anything, you know, everything we have goes to bills and we have to get help sometimes with food and stuff and we just, mm, now that my insurance got all screwed up and everything and we lost um, our appeal to get me back on the insurance I had last year where we were ending up paying for stuff uh, out of pocket and doctor visits and ER visits and all that and that's rough on us too and we just were f falling behind and you know and people ask me well why don't I take legal actions for all the mess ups and everything I mean this was obviously error on their part but it's so hard to you know sue for malpractice and stuff and we just don't know where to begin even if we were looking into that option and we're not uh, you know because we're not that, that those type of peoples but it's just me and my wife and my son and we're struggling because we have no help and you know uh, we're doing the best we can and we keep asking for help and we're just frustrated we need an advocate to help us but as far as my sickness goes we're really out of end we don't 
know where we're going to go from here. And, you know, it's it's all up to the surgeon now, I guess. But he doesn't really have a game plan as of yet either. And I don't know what to do. And we don't know how things are going. It's really depressing and, you know, hard on my wife and hard on my son and especially hard on me. Um, I just have to live day by day and just kind of go from there. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to apologize to anybody that's been following my channel for, you know, me not putting any videos up lately because with everything I've gone through, I just haven't been able to sit up my computer and play or anything. I'm, I'm taking this video on my iPad right now just... You know, so I wanted to post a one-year update so that I could, you know, tell you guys uh, how everything's going. And I think, I think from now on, if I'm in the hospital or something, I'm, I think I'm going to make a video while I'm in the hospital just so that I could update people on why I'm in the hospital and stuff. And that way I also have a, a record of why I'm there, you know, because with all the medications I'm, I'm on and stuff, sometimes I forget uh, what's going on and stuff, so, but, anyway, thank you all for watching this video, and um, I hope you guys all have a good weekend, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, um, I just had a, my uh, 39th birthday a couple weeks ago, and, um, that was a lot of fun. We had a bunch of people over that I hadn't seen in a while, so it uh, meant a lot to me. And Well, um, I guess I will see you guys in the future, and thanks for watching, and thanks for understanding. And, you know, if you want to help us in any way, let me know. Any help is greatly appreciated, you know. Uh, we sure could use it. And, uh, all right, well. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you later. Bye.